Hello and welcome to ITNs. So uh, we have been covering quite a few features uh, in this session about uh, the security con perspective uh, which actually Azure provides right. In the last session we saw about the DDoS right uh, that was uh, for uh, saving our applications from denial of service to the legitimate users right. Now in this session what we are going to look at I mean we will be looking at some more features which are uh, which are part of your Azure security all right so we are going to look at um, Azure firewall and we are going to see some pictorial overviews about the Azure firewall and then we are going to talk about the features in detail uh, which actually are provided on the Azure firewall right great um, I'll see you in the session uh, but before that please do click on the subscribe icon uh, so that helps me in creating these sort of videos uh, and providing the updates on the regular interval, right? Great. Thank you. I'll see you in the session then. Thank you. Hello and welcome to ITNs. So in this session, we are going to look at Azure Firewall, right? And that is part of your app application protection service, right? Okay, great. Let's go right in. All right. So Azure Firewall is a managed cloud-based network security service that protects your Azure virtual network resources. It's a fully stateful firewall as a service with built-in high availability and unrestricted cloud scalability it actually centrally you can centrally create enforce and log applications and network connectivity policies across subscription and virtual not networks yeah and you can use a static public ip address for all your virtual network resources uh, i mean you don't have to assign the public ip addresses to all your vnets you can just assign it to your firewall and Firewall will do the necessary to redirect your traffic or route the traffic to the required VNet and then to the required application. All right. The service is fully integrated with Azure Monitor for logging and analytics. So that means you can actually have all your uh, capabilities of uh, SIEM wherein you can record all the events which are happening on across the firewall. Right. Yep. Great. Let's move to the next one, and this is about the pictorial view about the, how the Azure Firewall works. So it, it works in a hub and spoke uh, te technology where the Azure Firewall is in the hub, and the other components are in the uh, spoke uh, components. Yeah. So we have two um, VNets, uh, and this is of course credited with the uh, this particular diagram I have taken from. Uh, Microsoft sign uh, the link is out here so it has two uh, VNets yeah and you have your Azure firewall which is on the hub and you can actually whatever traffic which are coming in it could be from your on premises uh, servers or it could be from the internet right for your all your applications yeah so those all those applications will be first hitting on the Azure firewall and then it will be Azure Firewall will do all these checks and then it will uh, try route the traffic to the respective units. So what are the checks it is going to do? All right? Great. It actually does the check on the Microsoft. Um, uh, there are two actually components that you can configure on your Azure Firewall. One is the Microsoft Threat Intelligence uh, known malicious IPs and FKDS. Now this is something which Microsoft uh, dynamically maintains and actually uh, when you're configuring the Azure Firewall you can actually pull out all this information and keep your data updated inside this uh, inside the hub part of the Azure Firewall. So it will keep all your known records of the threats and uh, that's why that's how we can actually create a uh, more robust uh, sort of a filter for all the incoming traffics which are coming in from the internet 
and also i mean if there's a malicious attack uh, which is getting generated from on prem then it will create uh, it will be smart enough to uh, know that and take the corrective actions apart from this you can have a l3 l7 layer um, policies that you can configure on this that will additionally help in creating the security on your firewall right now what it what it does is it actually creates um, uh, the NAT and uh, network application traffic filtering rules which allows inbound and outbound access to your applications so your applications are not directly exposed to internet or to any external traffic it will all come through the azure firewall all your jump post servers all your required servers which are required to connect to the servers on the vnet you can have it out in this particular um, vnet that is the central vnet yeah? so you can actually have more robust control out in this way right great now let's move to the next one uh, wherein we are going to talk about the uh, features uh, which uh, azure firewall provides yeah so azure firewall has the built-in high availability right what does that mean high availability in is built-in so there's no additional load balancers that are required and there's nothing you need to configure right so that actually saves your cost on the load balancer uh, perspective now availability zones right now we have seen about the availability zones in the previous sessions right i mean how we can actually create the availability zones for your high availability right so azure firewall can be configured during deployment uh, to span multiple availability zones to for increased availability right so you know i mean the availability zone the sla is about 99.9 percent uh, up 10 right so with that you can actually associate azure firewall to a specific zone just for proximity reason using the service standard 99.95 percent sla and there is no additional cost for the firewall deployment in an availability zone however there are additional costs for inbound and outbound data transfers associated with availability zones right now one more thing which uh, you actually uh, which i wanted to bring to your attention was about the azure fire availability uh, fire availability zones are available in regions that support availability zones it will not be um, available in all these zones right yeah so when you are going to design it you have to take a note of it i'll repeat once again uh, that the availability zones are available in regions that support availability zones yeah and also note that availability zones can be configured during deployment and you can't configure an existing firewall to include available next one is application fqring fqd and filtering rules you can limit outbound https traffic or azure sql traffic to a specified list of fully qualified domain names um, that can include wildcards here yeah? so this feature doesn't require a TLS termination right now the next one is network traffic filtering rules so you can centrally create allow or deny network filtering rules by source and destination IP address port and protocol Azure firewall is fully stateful so it can distinguish legitimate packets for different types of connections yeah so rules are enforced and logged across multiple subscriptions and virtual networks fqdn tags so fqdn tags make it easy for you to allow well-known azure service network traffic through your firewall for example so you want to allow windows update network traffic through your firewall right so you can create an application rule and include the windows uh, update tag uh, and with that what happens is your network traffic from windows update can flow through your firewall so that's that's how uh, easy it is yeah uh, let's talk about the next one is about the service tags a service tag represents a group of ip address prefix to help minimize complexity for security rule creation you can't create your own service tags that is very important nor specify which ip addresses are included within a tag Microsoft manages the address prefixes encompassed by the service tags and it automatically updates the service tags as address changes. Yeah? 
threat intelligence and I um, mean we, we saw this point in our uh, pictorial overview when we in the previous slide right uh, that Microsoft has its own threat intelligence right so threat intelligence uh, based filtering can be enabled for your firewall to alert and deny traffic from and to to the known uh, malicious IP addresses and domains the IP address and domains are sourced from the Microsoft threat intelligence feeds yeah zones outbound snat or outbound snat or i mean it's actually um snat stands for source nat or uh, source network address uh, address translation yeah so in outbound virtual network traffic ip addresses are translated to azure firewall public ip you can identify and follow traffic originating from your virtual network to remote internet destinations azure firewall doesn't snat when the destination ip is a private ip at range uh, that is as per the iana rfc 1918 standards yeah now if your organization uses a public ip address range for uh, private networks or uh, uh, azure firewall uh, then Azure Firewall will uh, snap the traffic to one of the firewall private IP addresses in Azure Firewall subnet. Yeah, uh, just uh, recollect the, uh, the pictorial overview of the uh, Azure Firewall which we discussed in the previous slide. Yeah, so if the organization uses uh, that, uh, then uh, you can actually uh, do. Uh, I mean, you can actually um, have. Uh, I mean, Azure Firewall will snap the traffic to one of the uh, firewall public uh, private sorry private IP addresses in Azure firewall subnet All right you can configure Azure firewall to snap your public IP address range yeah all right uh, next move to inbound uh, the earlier one was outbound snat uh, now this one is inbound uh, dnat so dnat will stand for destination network address translation all right so inbound internet traffic address uh, so with this uh, the, with this feature you get uh, inbound internet traffic uh, to your firewall public IP address and that is translated and uh, filtered to the private IP address on your virtual network right okay uh, next one is about uh, the multiple public IP addresses now this feature you can associate um, uh, with the help of this feature you can associate multiple public IP address with your firewall and then uh, you can go up to about 250 uh, IP addresses this uh, feature also helps in enabling additional scenarios with the uh, SNAT and DNAT right so with with DNAT you can translate multiple standard port instances to your backend servers for example if you have two public IP address and with that you can translate tcp port 3389 for both ip addresses yeah that's how you can manage but with snat additional ports are available for outbound snat uh, connections uh, reducing the potential for snat uh, port exhaustion so at this time azure firewall randomly selects the source public ip address to use for a connection right you, you have seen that right if you have any downstream filtering on your network you need to allow all public IP addresses associated with your firewall and the recommendation is you should um, consider using a public IP address prefix to simplify this conf configuration right all right let's move to the next one that is Azure monitor logging so with this feature what happens is all events are integrated with Azure monitor okay so this allows you to archive logs to a storage uh, to a storage account or stream events to the event hub or send them to um, the azure monitor logs yeah so that can help in uh, recovering the historical information also correct forced tunneling so you can configure azure firewall to route all internet bound traffic to a destined destinated next hop instead of going through the internet for example, you can have an on-premise edge firewall or you know, other uh, network virtual appliances to process network traffic before it's passed to the internet, right? And the last one, the last feature uh, that uh, 
we have to discuss uh, as of now i mean these are the features that azure firewall has as of now okay so with, with the certification what um, azure firewall is um, payment card uh, industry uh, pci uh, and soc uh, in iso standards and uh, it is also compliant with the isa icsa uh, labs yeah so these are all the compliance or uh, compliance related features that azure firewall provides right great so here are some of the links that you can uh, go through for your additional uh, knowledge yeah and uh, yeah, that would help you in clearing your certifications right great that's all guys for this session i hope you enjoyed this and uh, uh, please do click on the thumbs icon or the like icon uh, and also please do click on the subscribe icon and if you're liking these videos please do click on the uh, the notification icon so that you can get update uh, as soon as the new video is uploaded all right great that's all guys uh, until next time keep watching and keep learning thank you